from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. This is a safe place. It's a place where we can feel free sharing our feelings. Think of my office as a nest in a tree of trust and understanding. It's okay, honey. That's why we came. I, I guess I, deep down I'm, I'm feeling a little confused. I mean, suddenly you get married and you're supposed to be this entirely different guy. I don't, I don't, I don't feel different. I mean, take, take yesterday, for example. We were, we were out at the Olive Garden, which was lovely. And... Uh, I had to look over at a certain point during the meal and see a, a waitress taking her order, and uh, and I found myself wondering uh, what color her underpants might be, her panties. Odds are they're probably basic white cotton, but I, I started thinking, well, maybe they're maybe they're silk panties, maybe it's a thong, maybe it's something really cool that I don't even know about, you know. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that that now that I'm married, I, I'm definitely feeling a little freaked out about the fact that I'm going to have sex with only one person for the rest of my life. I, I started feeling as if, what? What, I thought we were in the trust tree with, in the nest, are we not? It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. Now, you know the basics of Lycus 101. Now, first of all, the purpose of this course, and I hope the people who are uh, students in this class who don't forget the purpose of this course, I am not a marriage counselor. I have no business being a marriage counselor. I'm divorced four times. Four times. So don't call me here with your marital questions. In other words, if you want to know how to get out, I'll tell you how to do that. If you want to know uh, some advice about a divorce, well, maybe I can help you there. It's something I know about. Don't ask me how to make your marriage better. I am not going to pretend to be an expert in that area. It's a legitimate criticism, except that people don't understand. I try to make this clear. Anyone who thinks I'm trying to give marital advice on this program, you're, you're, you're kidding me. This classroom has nothing to do with teaching people how to have a better marriage. Call Dr. Laura for that, like she would know. <laughs> By the way, what's the latest on Derek Schlesinger? Just curious about that. I haven't checked out his MySpace page lately. What's going on there? <laughs> anyway, so don't call me. Uh, seriously, do not call your professor about how to make your marriage better. Don't do it. I, but how the hell would I know? I don't believe in marriage. I failed four times at being married. And frankly, uh, the best thing I ever did was not be married anymore. No, I... The purpose of this class is to teach you how to get laid for the least amount of money expended, energy expended, time expended on women who aren't going to give you what you want. And the reason you go on a date is to get laid. That's why you go on a date. 
My job is to keep you on the straight and narrow, not wasting money, not wasting time. My God, these chicks will eat up your entire day, every day if they can. Stop with the text messaging. Stop with answering the cell phone every time she calls. Stop being so available. Women react best to treating them like crap and keeping some mystery in it. If she knows she can reach you anytime she calls you, number one, she'll call you all the time when you don't want to get calls, and then she'll drop out of sight when you want to know where she is. Okay? If you want to have a girlfriend, this is not the show to call. This is not the class to be enrolled in. We are not here to teach you how to get and keep a girlfriend. I don't believe you should have a girlfriend. As your professor, I believe you should have what we uh, what we refer to as the bullpen. The bullpen is like the, uh, the pitching staff of a Major League Baseball team. And as you know, if you want to uh, take this as an analogy, as you know, any pitching staff on a baseball team has specialists. There are four or five starting pitchers. These are guys who can go five innings or more, throw hard. Sometimes they pitch a complete game. Usually they don't. And then in the bullpen, you've got the relief specialists, the middle reliever, the guy with the rubber arm, the setup guy, and most importantly, the closer. And what you want to do is you want to have women who can fulfill different roles in your bullpen. Because let's face it, there's no one-stop shopping with chicks. I mean, there's no one chick who can fulfill all your needs. You know, you've got chicks who are cool to hang out with. Chicks who like watching sports. Chicks who like to go boozing. Chicks who like sex and nothing else. Chicks that you could take to your parents' house on the 4th of July for a barbecue and not be embarrassed by their stupidity or by their vulgarity or by having uh, tattoos right up to their uh, cranium. There are chicks that nobody ever sees you with, probably the ones who are completely covered head to toe with tats, who uh, you would never bring home. But uh, in the sack, they get the job done and you want to get the job done. There are chicks who like going to the movies, chicks who hate going to the movies. The the idea is, rather than getting one chick and trying to get her to do all the things you want to do, do it the way I do it. You know, over the years, I've had a bullpen. In the bullpen, I've got women who clean up really good. You know, like if I need to go to an event, I need to bring a chick with me to an event. I've got the chick who cleans up good. I've got the chick who none of my friends or family will ever meet because she's just a slut who just likes to have sex all night long and has nothing else to talk about, nothing, (laughs) nothing, nothing. And she's available at a moment's notice. Okay? I've got the chick who likes to go see independent films and then have sex. I've got the chick who likes to have a few drinks late at night after she gets off work and then have sex. I've got chicks who like to go out and eat Chinese food or Greek food. Cheap Chinese and Greek food. And then have sex. I've got chicks who like to get in my hot tub. The the fact is, I've got a chick for every specific activity. Some of them like more than one. Some don't like the same things I like. So we try to stay to the things that we have in common and do those together. And the rest of the time, no. You do not want to have a girlfriend. You want to have a bullpen. You want to have a variety of women who fulfill whatever needs you have. You've got a job and you need to bring a significant other and look responsible, You know, say a law firm or an accounting firm or ad agency or somewhere like that. You need one particular kind of chick, probably somebody who has an education, Somebody who won't embarrass you when she speaks. 
somebody who knows how to dress the part and isn't going to dress incorrectly for an event. You need to have one of those if you have that kind of a job. I have a job like that. I have to uh, socialize with advertising clients or with people who work at various radio stations. If I want to bring somebody along, I have to bring somebody along who's not going to embarrass me or cause a scene. Then you might have that manifestly irresponsible chick that you can't be seen in public with because she would cause scenes or get too drunk or get too rowdy or out of control. So you want to confine her to her place or maybe your place, but you definitely don't want to be taking her out anywhere or be seen with her. Uh, some of you, just because you need to fill in those days when you need to get laid and uh, nobody's available from the bullpen, you got the chunky chick or you've got the butterface who you visit late at night, never sees the light of day, you never go out on a date with her because somebody might run into you, okay? Bottom line is you have your own specialties that you need fulfilled. I treat it like a baseball bullpen where I can call anybody in from the bullpen when I need a particular kind of chick to come in and throw the sixth inning. You know what I'm talking about? It's that simple. Anyway, you understand what this is all about. My job as your professor is help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, avoid marriage, avoid wasting money, time, and energy on bitches who don't give you what you want, which is sex. Many of you have problems with your professor. We encourage vigorous classroom debate and discussion. Compare and contrast. Yes, you can do that here. And, of course, many of you need uh, questions answered. Of course, you need to attend this course every week if you want to get really good at this. So let's get started. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 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 Your advice is helping, and I want to tell all the listeners out there, listen, guys, this is the man right here. You follow like his rules, you won't have a problem getting you-know-what in the sack. All you have to do is pay attention to Father. And it will happen. It's Like His 101 on the Tom Like His Show. Yes, yes, you've tuned into the Tom Like His Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number, Like His 101. I am your professor. Bow, your call. Jackson, hello. Great. First time getting through to you. All right, good. I got a problem, bud. I uh, I signed up for a marriage, signed up for a certificate, and uh, this is before I started listening to you, and I just want to talk, tell all the callers out there, they need to pay attention to what you got to say, you know, do their do their homework, and, and don't get the same situation I'm in, because it's, it's the worst thing I could have ever done in my life. Why'd you do it? I don't know, man. I guess I guess I thought that was the thing to do. Yeah, see that you know? I'll be I'll be honest with you. Uh, that's why I got married. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a dumb decision. But because you know, my, my you know my parents were married for forty years, they weren't divorced. My my dad and my mom were together until my dad died. Well, yeah, my parents are still married, but they bicker each other. And you know, my dad pretty much toes the line when it comes to you know what my mom has to say. So, but I got to get out of the situation, Tom. What can I do? Go get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> do you have children? No, no children. That makes it really easy. No children, no children. Well, I, if I were you, I'd stop having sex with her. I have, I have. And, well, I get, I get that from somewhere else. Oh, all right. Well, it's really time to go. I don't know why you stay there. <laughs> well, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just, I just need to. I'm just worried about her getting, getting too much from me. You know, when we go to court. Taking, taking some of my money with her, you know, well, our money. Uh, let me ask you this question, uh, and this is important. I mean, uh, does she have a job? No, she doesn't work, Tom. She's the laziest broad on the earth. Did you, what, did she have a job when you met her? Oh, yeah, she had a job. She had all these, you know, supposed goals, and she was going to do this, and she's going to do that. Now she just sits on her ass <laughs> or on her butt. Oh, Jesus. Well, put it this way. The longer you stay, the more you pay. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah, I, I mean, I, if I have to put it into the form of a rhyme, that uh, that's a fact. The longer you stay, the more you pay. Right, right. So delaying it doesn't make the situation better. 
Right. Yeah, I think I, I, I think she'd make a good stripper, Tom. <laughs> she's hot, but she's lazy. Well, time to go, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. Have you talked to her about a divorce? Uh, no, I just like to I just like to cut it off like an just like you know like in Braveheart where they cut cut uh, Mel Gibson's head off. I just like to just give her the axe. All right. Just well, cut, then you just, need to go to an attorney, get the papers drawn up, and then drop them on her like a ton of bricks. Yes. That's what I'm going to do. And what you need to do at the same time? Do you do you have an apartment? No, I, I have a house. And that you own? I own a house. Did yes, you own a, not, Did you own? Not on. You know, she's not on the, on the. No, she's not on the house. She's not on the house, but well, no, you better not. talk to an attorney about uh, the fact that you have uh, by the fact that she's not working. I guess they could say you commingled funds. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, she might try to lay claim on that house. Yeah. So well, you need to talk to an attorney about what yeah. the risks are, and you need to get that going. Yeah, well, just, you know, just for all my friends who are listening to you, because I know there's a lot of them out there, you know, that, you know, to turn me on to your show. You know, I kind of made all this up, but thank God I didn't marry that big Kelly three Dean. But, you know, I just wanted to get through to you and, and put, kind of theoretically say, hey, if this happened. But it didn't, Tom, because I listened to you, and I got rid of it a long time ago. Good talking to you. Keep, keep up the good work. Thank you, Jackson. Portland, Oregon. The first two calls from Portland this hour. This is Dave. Hello. Tom. Dave. What's going on? It's doing a radio show here, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I know. Hey. Uh, That's why uh, we call you the listener. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, uh, got a little deal going on. Got a girlfriend. Not married. You know, none, none of that crazy stuff, but uh, want to have sex with another girl that, that, that wants to. With That's me. just plain stupid. Why? Because why do you need a girlfriend if you need to F around? I don't need a girlfriend. Then get out. Well, it's, it's not that bad. Pal, you don't need to live with her. Yeah. Why do, you, need why do you need to live with her? Don't need to. Then don't do it. Yeah. Do what women do. You want to do what women do in this situation? I hope guys are listening because this is what women do in the situation you're in right now. There you are. You live with your girlfriend, but you want to nail somebody else. Do what women do in this situation. Uh, I'm going to give you a little quiz here, Dave. What do women say when they're in your situation? They just nail somebody else. No, no. <laughs> they say something before they do it. What do they say? Uh... Uh, the things aren't, aren't the same. No, aren't right. no I'm going to tell you. Here's what they say. You ready? I'm ready. All right. They say, I need my space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Or I need more space. Well, you know, I haven't really ever heard that, to be honest with you. But Well, that's what they say when they're in your situation. Yeah, but I never, nobody, no girl's ever said that to me, but I... Right, but I they, I women never saying. say, I, gee, I just met a guy, I really want to have sex with him, so I'm going to dump you. They don't say that. They say things like, I need my space. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's that's the kind of space they need. Yeah, well, we've been together for a few years, so, you know, names on the house and everything, too, though. Why did you allow that to happen, Dave? Uh, it's easier that way. No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Uh, well, is it worth what you're going to have to pay for that convenience? What's that? Is it worth what you're going to have to pay for that convenience? Well, that's what I'm asking you. What, what, what's that going to entail? Well, first of all, Dave, uh, does she pay the mortgage along with you? No. So why did you put her name on the house? Yes, yeah, it was. Because you were stupid. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Right? Well, I don't, I don't know. It's just I don't think it's necessarily a huge mistake at the time, and I'm not really, you know. Here's why it's stupid. Like her Here's she why works. it's stupid, because she doesn't put a penny into that house, and when you do break up or you sell the house, she's going to get half the value of the house. What? No kidding. Yes. Don't you know that? How stupid are you? No, 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 no. I, I know that there's there's a certain time time frame where... And the fact that she's on there, that she'll get half of it. So, uh, Dave, the, I don't care it, if, if you care. buy the house with your brother or your mom or <laughs> your high school uh, best buddy. Well, whoever's name. Think about that stuff. But you, pal, 
you have to think about that stuff. <laughs> you have to think about that stuff. By the way, you think you're the only one this has ever happened to? I have had three different women tell me they wanted their name on my deeds of my homes. Uh, three different women. You didn't do it. No. <laughs> I'm paying for the houses. Well, I'm a little bit younger than you. And by the way, it makes the breakups a lot easier. Because when she moves out, sure as all, I own the house. She doesn't really have a choice, number one. Number two, I don't have to sell the house every time I break up a relationship. Yeah. I, and then split the proceeds like you're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy anybody out. That might be the easiest way, huh? Well, the point is, Dave, you paid for that house. Mm -hmm. You should have all the equity, and when the house is sold, it should all belong to you. Yeah. You gave yeah, her theoretically. A, <laughs> you gave her a big gift. How much equity do you have in that house? Uh, it's, we just bought it a while ago. How much equity do you have? I don't know. I don't know the number. How much did you put down? Ten. Ten percent. Thousand. Ten thousand dollars. It's obviously more than that now. How long ago was that? You said it was a short time ago. Not even a year. All right. So chances are the house isn't worth more than what you paid for it. Probably not yet, no. Especially after agency commission and what have you? Yeah. If sure. I, if, so now's the time to get out, Dave. You don't want the house going up in value. Get the hell out, huh? Get out now. <laughs> All right. I know you won't do it. I can tell you're going to stay there. But uh, really, I don't know why you want to live a life like that. Uh, where I'm you... not really unhappy, though. You know what I mean? Well, then if you're not unhappy, don't be banging other chicks. <laughs> okay. Just come up with some new stuff to spice her up, huh? Or just, you know what? The best way to freshen up a relationship is to keep having new chicks all the time. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I by agree. the way, I want to tell you, I'm 50 years old. You think I've ever taken a Viagra? Ever? I hope not. Never. a boy. But you know Why? Uh, because hopefully. there's there's always some new meat, Dave. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, well, hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Can you take me out with a ball rip and blow me up? Why, yes, I can. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Greg on Like It's 101 with your professor. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. I'm just calling because I have a question I was hoping you could enlighten me with and All right. some of the listeners. Okay. Well, basically, um, I'm intrigued to find out when you're talking to a woman and uh, or a girl in whatever case and you want to uh, kind of get her on the same page so you can nail her and not have to worry about being in a relationship. A lot of the times girls, you know, they just have the, uh, the hopes that it's going to turn into a relationship. And even if they agree at the time, they say, uh, yeah, that's fine. You know, we can just be uh, screw buddies. Um, then later down the road, they hope and, you know, by uh, having sex with you that it turns into a relationship. So I was just wondering exactly uh, what's the best way to uh, put it to them so that they are on the same page. Well, I don't think you put it to them at all because those conversations are very dicey. And if you use a term like booty call to some chicks, they'd be offended even though they are booty calls. Uh, many of them are in denial and think you're a boyfriend or a potential boyfriend. And they don't want to be called booty calls. So you don't want to use any references. Uh, you, the way to get messages like that across is the way you treat them. So what would you say? Here are the ways to treat a woman like a booty call so that she knows her place in the food chain. Ready? I'm ready. Never let the light of day hit her face. It's number one. You know what I'm talking about? Definitely. Take her out at night only, never during the day. If, if, if you, by the way, avoid taking her out. <laughs> That's another way. Okay. Because she's a booty call. Gotcha. I mean, the purpose of this is to get laid, not to go to the movies. Gotcha. All right. So, you know, but uh, you, you certainly don't want to see her in the light of day, and you don't want to be taking her out to restaurants, movie theaters. Uh, you don't want to see her before 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Uh, you don't sleep over. 
she doesn't sleep over at your place. In fact, you try to keep it at her place. So once it's uh, the deed's done, you're out of there? Is that... Yes. Plus, on top of that, she's not to meet your friends or family ever. Gotcha. And that means no feeling sorry for her on Christmas or Thanksgiving, nothing. What about with the, uh, I was just listening a little bit a while ago, and you were saying that there's uh, kind of different flavors for each situation, and, and there's times when you need to take, uh, for instance, um, you know, a business when you uh, need to bring don't it do that with a boot, Don't do that with a booty call. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the person who would go to a business meeting with you or business lunch or dinner is somebody who's more like a friend with benefits. Ah, uh, gotcha. Don't take a booty call there. Okay. Because booty calls you don't take anywhere. Okay. All right. Uh, the bottom line with a booty call is uh, guys make such mistakes. You know, or like some of them get lonely on the holidays. They'll call up a booty call or they'll feel sorry for a booty call. And they'll go, come on, I'm going to have a Thanksgiving dinner with my parents. Come with me. And what happens is these girls start to think they are more than just a booty call when you do that. You I want understand. to keep them in their place. So you don't call them a booty call. You treat them like a booty call, like there's no significance in your life. So it's an unspoken thing is what you're saying. Correct. I speak louder than words. If, if she wants to call herself a booty call, uh, then fine. But but you're <laughs> not gonna you're not gonna introduce that term to her. Okay. Because many women remember, many women just have low self esteem and they're having sex with you, hoping that you'll see them as something more. Gotcha. And, and the reality is, with some of these chicks, you'll never see them as something more. But you can't make the mistake of treating a booty call like a girlfriend. So there's no, no, that... no New Year's ahead. Eve's, no, no Valentine's Day. No, if you ever eat food together, it's because you bring a bag of like Del Taco over there. <laughs> okay. Okay. And have her eat it, uh, you know, and then, then, then they toss the garbage out and be done with it. But there, there's no restaurants. If she, if you ever have to open a car door for a booty call, you've done too much with her. Good point. All right, so that's uh, that's how you keep someone being a booty call by treating so, them so, like treating them like crap. The re the reason I ask is um, recently out of a long term relationship and uh, starting up the bullpen again, so I'm trying to uh, fill the, the the starting lineup yeah. and uh, the backup. Yeah, save. this for you is like uh, it's like uh, pitchers and catchers have reported to camp. It's early spring training, and you are uh, you've got a few bullpen roles that need to be filled, and you are now auditioning. Spring training camp, and then you will use these chicks only in their defined roles, and you don't ever let them get mixed up. Okay. Don't use your uh, uh, your girl who you take out to events uh, to be uh, your movie girl or your baseball girl. Keep them keep them in their place. I understand. You because you want to keep it at five or six girls like a bullpen. So what would you say is a safe number before you get too much? Five or six? I would say the the for for my taste the the highest number is seven at any given time in the bullpen, one for each day. <laughs> Definitely. The idea though is, but for one good reason to have a bullpen. And I, I hope the students are listening now because this is very important. One good reason of a bullpen is when you have too few women, you start to, you know, like idle hands of the devil's uh, workshop, you know, <laughs> uh, like you start like saying, well, gee, you know, she's not bad. Maybe she'd like be girlfriend material. Maybe she's wife material. The problem for most guys, they don't have enough plate spinning. So a bullpen is a good way to keep you busy on, on, on every night of the week. The thing I've noticed is, you know, I was getting older. I'm, I'm not old. I'm 25. But back when I was in a fraternity, you know, you have uh, girls coming and going every day. So it's, it's definitely not a hard thing to, uh, you know, in your spare time to pick up uh, one for each day, as you're saying. But once you uh, start working every day and your free time's limited, it uh, gets more difficult to, you know, start loading up for the bullpen. And, but, but, uh, but the thing that is, that's when you need a bullpen more than ever because you have less time to devote to this stuff anyway. So you need chicks who, like, you know their name, you know their phone number, you know where they live, they know where you live, if, if they're going to come over to your place, which I prefer not to have happen if you can avoid it. Definitely. 
All right. And and so what happens is uh, uh, this way, when you come home late from work and you need some action, you've got a specific person you know you can call upon. Over the years, I've always had somebody in that role, somebody I can ring up at 10 o'clock at night, 1030, and say, hey, what are you doing? And, and and before long, they're snacking down on me. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Definitely. And you're saying no more than yes. That's right. And believe me, as the Hollywood Bowl season comes, women know I have that box of the Hollywood Bowl. My phone starts ringing. And then every year when I'm going on vacation, if I'm going someplace nice and somebody hears me mention it on the air, <laughs> the phone rings again. But you never take these chicks out of their roles in the bullpen. I think that's an important lesson. I'm glad you're bestowing that upon my knowledge. That's you and all the rest of the classroom here, Greg. Thanks for the call. Good luck. 1-800-5-800-866. Never give a chick your cell phone number or your pager number until you've seen if she's shaved or unshaved. <laughs> Amen. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Uh, not much. Hey, you like your dad I never had. Yes, I am. I just was kind of reflecting on that a little bit. You were talking earlier about those pussy whip guys who uh, grew up with their mothers, single mothers, didn't really have a father figure. Yep. Um, I was one of those guys. I was in a long-term relationship. Definitely had the call around my neck for uh, a couple years. Um, been out of the game. Uh, been, into the, been into the game. Uh, been out of the relationship for about nine months now. And it seems like every girl that I, you know, I start to build a relationship with or I can't seem to I can't seem to cross home plate. You know, it never seems to get you know to the bedroom. If, if that makes any sense. Well, are you a nice guy or a jerk? I'm a nice guy. That's why. But you know, I do, I play the jerk move. I play I pull the jerk card out, and still, I mean, you need to pull it out consistently so that it's a believable thing. Because you know what, you sound like too nice a guy to be getting late. I mean, is that it? I just got to. Uh, you know, appear the less nice. Yeah, you have to be less nice. I have, I have to be less nice. And appear less nice as a result. All right. I mean, any any other words of wisdom? Well, uh, Michael, you have to master this. If you have to practice on strangers, do it. Yeah. Um... You have to treat women like crap. Whatever your instincts tell you to do, do the opposite. <laughs> If it's it really, it would, it's really it, good advice. If it would offend your mother, it's the right thing to do. I like it. Uh, because, by the way, where's your dad? Uh, I mean, he's been around. He's, he works. You know, he's he's never really been in the house. He's right. always been out on business. And your mom tells you he's a jerk, right? Uh, my mom doesn't really have any opinion towards him. I, but I grew up, you know, being raised pretty much by my mom. Right. And now you sound like a guy who's been raised by his mom. Considerate, nice, don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. You feel like so, girls girls are doing you a favor when they talk to you? So how do I, uh, I mean, how do I approach a girl, you know, and not... Where do you, you know, go to meet women? Where do you meet them? Usually usually the bars or the clubs right. in the L.A. LA scene. Well, number one, uh, did do women ever come up to you at all, ever? Um, n not really. I'm not. So you never had a girl. You know, girls, I know, talk to me, but it it takes a lot for a girl, especially in L.A., to uh, to give me the time of day. I guess. What do you, what do you mean by especially in L.A.? These L.A. girls are a different breed. I go to school in San Diego. It's, uh, more of like a relaxing. L.A. girls are uh, high maintenance. Michael, uh, maybe uh, you're aiming too high. Uh, you live in the San Fernando Valley, do you? I do. What you want to do is uh, check your local listings for someplace like a TGI Friday. Are you kidding me, Tom? Kid you not. 
I'm not a TGI Friday kind of guy. It doesn't matter. What you want is a TGI Fridays kind of girl. Do you know what kind of girls go to TGI Fridays? Fat girls go to TGI Fridays. No, no, Fridays. no. You're wrong because he, clearly you haven't been there. And what, you're 21. How long have you been able to go to a bar, for God's sake? Like eight months. Do you know? Yeah, right. So what do you know about this? You know what kind of girls go to TGI Fridays? Receptionists. Uh, girls who are 21, 22, who, 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 you know, go just in the early stages of being legal at a bar. Girls who, if th they go to TGI Fridays because they can't really afford to buy an entire meal for themselves, so they get like potato skins and a Long Island iced tea. These are not high maintenance girls, and they're not fat. They're just poor. They're the kind of girls that drive like, you know, like a Kia or some really cheap car. Yeah, I guess that's a good uh, untapped market, you know. Well, that's where you need to get started. That's where I need to start. That's the, where I need to learn my game, right? Well, that's right. There were several TGI Fridays in the San Fernando Valley, and the one I know about is in Woodland Hills, but I know there's more than one. You need to go to, like, Super Pages or the Yellow Pages or something, and you need to look up a TGI Fridays and go there. All right, Tom, keep blowing me up for old times. Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Lisa on like is one oh one with your professor. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, okay, here's my question. With regard to the bullpen, the female bullpen, um, where I'm the girl and my bullpen obviously are guys. Um, my question is getting the phone calls out there without because <laughs> The whole thing with guys, and I notice that I get a better response if I don't, like, respond to phone calls one or two times. And then I find that, you know, as is, is with relationships mostly, um, the less responsive I am, the more responsive the guys are. Yeah, but, that's right. But when I um, – so what ends up happening is then it's always – I end up seeing these guys when it's convenient for them or when they call me. What is the deal with – me or the girl calling the guy at random hours for the booty call. I mean, how really, what, what, how do most guys, you know, interpret that? I mean, is that something I should be worried well, about? Well, uh, you, I, uh, you, you, you hope they think you're a slut because, um, <laughs> when you call me at 11 o'clock at night and you've had a couple of drinks in you, I hope That's you're not calling true. me to play part cheesy. <laughs> That's true, but I guess all in all, I am kind of somewhat concerned with the general, you know, the general well, you have to think like a guy, dear. Now, I'm giving you uh, advice, uh, chick advice, okay? You you need to uh, be like a guy. Okay. What do you think guys are like? Guys aren't worried about what other people think. That's true. We have needs. We get them fulfilled. Now, you're not looking to marry any of these guys, so what do you care if they think you're a slut? That's true. It, all My entire bullpen are essentially inappropriate partners. They're just basically... Yes. You know, well, that's mostly who you should have in there. Unless you have somebody who would be the guy who cleans up well to, to, to go to a work function with you or something. Um, the re you know, like, like you probably got a Hugh Grant type in there or something for that purpose. The rest of them are all guys you could never take home to mom, guys with the wrong tattoos, guys who drive the wrong motorcycles, uh, guys who are losers, but uh, they look good like musicians, actors, uh, ball players, or whatever. Exactly, and th those are the types of guys that that I do have in the bullpen now. Also, because these guys tend to be highly sought after, um, is there a certain protocol like that you would use with guys maybe who who you know get well, more? Well, it's just like what I tell guys about women: the less you need to call upon them, the more interested they are. Um, if you're calling a guy too often, he's going to think you're in need. Yeah. The trick okay. is you don't need them that badly. And what keeps you from needing that badly is having a bullpen. Exactly. You've always got somebody else to tap into so that you're not calling upon any member of the bullpen too often. Gotcha. Never forget well, what happened. By the way, I don't know if you're a baseball fan. Never forget what happened to Eric Gagne. <laughs> Called upon too often, made too many appearances. What happened? It was the end of his career coming out of the bullpen for the Dodgers. For God's sake, don't be Eric Gagne. The Tom Likas Show.